Hello Excel users, in this latest Excel VBA power tip, I'm going to show you how to use VBA collections to remove duplicates. But before I do that, I'm going to give you an overview of collections when using it in VBA coding. How to use Excel VBA collections to remove duplicates? First of all, what's a collection in Excel VBA? It's a way for you to store many similar related or unrelated values in a single variable rather than store values in separate variables. So rather than store people's names in separate variables like name1, name2, name3, each of them in their own separate variables, we can store them all in a single variable efficiently in a collection called, say, names collection. Using a collection allows you to store many values and access and manipulate those values easily and quickly. So examples of related values could be cars, countries or colors or people's names unrelated value so you could have a combination of cars, countries or colors so there's no restriction. So how do we declare a variable, a collection variable? This is how you do it. So once a collection object variable, in this case the cars collection is defined, it needs to be instantiated, created and we need to use a new uh, keyword collection like this. So collection methods, there are four collection methods, action commands, and there are no properties, and no attributes. And the four collection methods are add, that's going to add a new item to the end of the collection, or before, after any item, which you can specify. You can remove, we remove a specified item from the collection, or you can insert, insert an item to any specific position in the collection. For example, could be the beginning, middle, or the end. And the final method, is a count that will count the number of items in the collection. One thing to bear in mind is collection item indexing starts at one, not zero, unlike arrays. So here's some examples of adding new items and duplicate items to a collection. So let's add items to the cars collection. So here's some examples of items uh, that are going to be added to the cars collection. And, and in this case, uh, the item and the key are also the same. So um, this is needed in terms of when we do the duplicate, we have to take advantage of the key element. So in this case, we've got RX350 and the key is also RX350 and you've got other examples there as well. Now, if you add the same item in terms of item value and the key item value is the same, in this case, RX350, you, uh, which is highlighted here, and you add it to the collection, you'll get this runtime error uh, from uh, BBA um, and that will say that is already associated with an element of this collection because the key is a duplicate and duplicate keys are not allowed when adding them to collections. Then we can take advantage of that uh, when uh, putting in unique items in the collections. So duplicate items are allowed in collections if we didn't specify the key uh, part of the adding uh, but if, if, that, if the key is also duplicate then Actel won't allow this and throw an error message. So we can take advantage of this and add unique items only to a unique uh, to the collection by using the on error resume next statement. So adding new items with and without a key, here's some examples. So if you're gonna to add to the cars collection without a key, there's two ways. You can add, I, I add the item, for example, Mercedes E350 and using the item part of the syntax or you can omit the item part of the syntax and just put the, the value. So adding to the cost collection with a different name key. So in this case, we're adding um, the item Volkswagen Golf and the key is not the same as the item, but it's been referred as car underscore one. So you can have different uh, key values for different items. So if you wanted to access um, Volkswagen Golf, by the key, you do it this way. So you've got the cars, open brackets, and then the name of the key. In this case, cars underscore one. So when you're adding cars to the collection with the same name key, so in this case, Volkswagen Golf, and then the key is also the same. And then if you use the same name key, again, the same value, Actor will throw an error message like this, which we showed earlier. So here we have a simple list of cars and the items are, are 
highlighted in yellow are those duplicated items that we want removing. So how do we go about using VBA collections to do that? Quite simple really. So first of all, um, you go into the Visual Basic Editor. So you press a combination of Alt F11, or if you go into the Developer tab, you click on Visual Basic. I'm going to have both windows, the Visual Basic Editor and the, the worksheet side by side. Okay, and also I'm going to be closing the project window and the properties window so you can see more of the code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to single step through the code and explain what each section of the code does. So first of all, um, I'm going to show you what variables I'm going to be using. The first variable is a cars collection. It's a collection object that relates to cars, which will be holding all the cars items. And then you've got the sheet object that's going to be based on the sheet that contains all the items, in this case duplicates. The long last row, the actual variable name is last row, um, but the data type will put as long, and that's going to be used to get the last row of the data set. So in this case, it's going to be column A, so we'd expect that to be 16. The long row variable is also long data type, and that's going to be used as a cell row looping variable. Um, the last one is index, uh, integer, data type, and that's going to be used as a collection index looping variable. So we're going to be declaring a new collection for cars like this, highlighted in yellow. Next, we're going to be assigning the sheet object to worksheet duplicates, and we're going to select cell A1, as you can see there. next thing is if I go back to here uh, long last row that's correctly set to 60. The way that works is for the the worksheet object for duplicates and for cells method it looks at the millionth row of the, the of the actual application and from Excel 2007 that's going to be a million and then for column A that's going to be uh, for that cell uh, column A the millionth uh, row column A is going to go all the way to the top of the last data set row and then return the row. So it's going to essentially work backwards. And it's safer working backwards than working forwards. And the last row is correctly set. So we know that's working correctly. The next thing is um, the, the next uh, area of the code is the VBA. Uh, it's the actual looping area. And what that does is it the, the row which is the row of the, the worksheet starting to to the last row of the data set. And what we're going to do is we're going to be adding the cell value from cell A2 uh, all the way to cell A16 into the item the items in the class collection. What we're also going to do is we're going to set the, the value of the item as also the same as the key. So we can see the syntax for the key is exactly the same as the syntax of the item. Uh, the only other thing is the there's a convert string variable, uh, sorry, method of use function, uh, which will convert the, the item into a string to make sure both the item and the key are both same in terms of data type, in this case string. So here column A is going to be used for the range and long row, that's the looping variable. So that's A2, A3, A4, all the way down to A16. The next part of the looping variable is, uh, looping code is, it's going to, uh, when each item in the data set is examined, it's going to, and either it's added to the collection or not, depending if it's um, unique or not, um, the value checked um, message, like wording is going to be added to column B, the value stated, to confirm that the item has been checked. So if I loop through that, it's going to loop through all the way down to cell B16. Right, so now that the uh, all of the items have been added to the cars collection, what we do now is we use a, a second uh, a looping uh, variable uh, in integer index. We're going to yeah, loop it through one, which is going to be the first element of the um, collections. Unlike arrays, um, indexing from uh, 
for collection starts at one, not zero. And then we're going to use a cards count to work out the, the maximum number of uh, items in the collection. In this case, it should be well. In this case, it should be the the unique items. Um, the other thing is because um, indexing starts at one, the output has to be from uh, row two. So we add one to the int index uh, variable. So we look through that, and you can see the unique items are being pasted into column C, and you should see no duplicated items. And the message has been uh, shown in the message box so that the old unique items have been pasted. And as you can see, you've got unique items in column C, which is nine, nine unique items. And if you can't, if you manually look at the, um, the the unhighlighted items in the original data set, that's three, three there, two there, six, nine. So that confirmed that we've now got a unique set of items based on the, the full set of items using VBA collections. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.